welcome to the show and thanks so much for joining with us. Marianne's mom never stopped working. This single mom juggled a variety of jobs. Still, she could never make enough money to keep food on the table. And Marianne and her sister were starving. 14-year-old Marion and her little sister Esperanza were starving. They live in a remote mountain community in the Philippines. It's been hard for their mom, Mary Lou, to find work. I do pretty much anything to feed my kids. I plant crops, make brooms. I go house to house to sell cosmetics. I never stop working so we can have food. Sometimes I feel like I'm carrying it all on my own. Since there hasn't been enough money to buy food, the girls became malnourished. This is Marion. I saw how hard my mom works so we can have food. I get scared for her. I thought, what if she gets sick? Whenever I think of that, it feels like my whole body gets weak. Sometimes I just want to cry, thinking, where will I get money for the next meal? When CBN's Orphans Promise came to the community, we found many children like Mary Lou and Esperanza suffering from malnutrition. So we started a daily feeding program at this learning center, which we also sponsor. The food program has taken a lot of pressure off Mary Lou and her family. I don't feel alone anymore. I feel like I have someone supporting me. I don't have to worry about whether or not my girls are eating well because they get to eat here. My dream is for my girls to finish school and have a better life. Thank you for those who sent help for us kids here. Because of the feeding program, we became healthy and happy. I really thank you because you don't just help our family, you help our entire community. Thank you so much. Well, I absolutely love that story because it's such a great picture of what CBN partners are doing literally all over the world. You heard Marion just say, you're not just helping my family, you're helping our entire community. And when you're helping people practically, like you just saw, you're helping feed families, you're helping people after natural disasters, you're giving them clean water, you're helping provide life-changing surgeries. When you join the CB, when you join with CBN, that's exactly what you're doing. You're helping people in practical ways. Ways, and you're also spreading the message of the gospel in areas that need it most. So if you want to do that, if you want to help the least of these, and I just want to remind you, Jesus said in the Bible, when you help the least of these, whatever you do to the least of these, you're doing unto me. So if you want to help people and you want to change the world, become a member of the 700 Club right now. It's really simple. All you have to do is either give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, or go to cbn.com, or you can do, as I always like to say, say my personal favorite. I am a millennial, so of course I would want to text to give. All you have to do is text CBN to 71777. From there, you'll get a link. You click that link and it'll It'll uh, bring you to this giving page where you can choose which level you would like to join at. So if you want to join at the 700 Club level, that's $20 a month. Some of you might be able to do 700 Club Gold, which is $40 a month. Some of you might be able to do more, which is 1,000 Club, $84. And some of you might be able to do even more than that. My word of encouragement always is to always be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is putting on your heart. So if you want to change the world and you want to do it while spreading the message of the gospel and helping people in practical ways, meeting their needs, Join with the 700 Club right now. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. And when you do, we actually want to give you something. This is our way of saying thank you. This is our latest teaching. It's by Gordon Robertson. It's the Lord is my shepherd, a Psalm of David. It goes through Psalm 23, which is probably the most uh, memorable Psalms of all time. And Gordon really just breaks it down. And he breaks it down from the Hebrew translation and the rabbinical commentary. And I'm telling you, it will encourage you. It will uplift you as you just go through the word of God. The Word of God is life-changing. So if you want this and you want to help change lives all around the world and do it in the name of Jesus, join with us today. Call us 1-800-700-7000 or again, text CBN to 71777. 
Well, the Bible is filled with different kinds of writings that have varying purposes and diverse historical contexts. And sometimes understanding why certain things are written in God's Word can be a little confusing. And one of our viewers wrote us on YouTube and asked, the Old Testament is full of commands that seem over the top from diet to kinds of clothes people should wear. If God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why were His commands back then so um, stringent, which is, you know, a great question that Gordon is going to <laughs> answer. <laughs> well, why do, you, why do you think he's so stringent? Um, because he's God and he knows all things. No, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think by that time, you know, Jesus hadn't died on the cross, right? So right. the atonement for sin wasn't yet accomplished. Well, there so, was atonement for sin in the Old Testament, in the well, Torah. through sacrifice, right. but like... Through sacrifice. Of all time. It had to be recurring. Yes. Could, you, there wasn't one and done. Exactly. Uh, it had to be recurring. Mm -hmm. And then there were some sins you could commit that there was no sacrifice for, mm -hmm. which is why David said, sacrifice and offering you did not require. Yeah. His sin was so great, mm -hmm. adultery and murder, there was no sacrifice for that under the Torah system. Yeah. Uh, we enjoy the new covenant that's made in the blood of Jesus Christ, yes. and it's a wonderful freedom we have. Absolutely. Um, it's not a freedom to sin, it is a freedom to get forgiven yeah. and to get restored and then live a righteous life. The reason it's so strict, in my opinion, is God is, is keeping to himself a holy people. And so the restrictions, uh, the restrictions on you can't trim your beard, you can't shave. I've shaved this morning. Am I violating the Torah? Yes. Mm. Uh, if you look at your garment and say, well, it's not all of one thread. It's not a, a single fabric. So they would be very specific as to what were the linen garments and what were the woolen garments and the different, um, the priests had to wear different types uh, of garment. They had to have pure linen. Um, all of these things were designed to separate the Jewish people unto God. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at genetics and what happens to a population where sin becomes rampant, the sins of the fathers are, are visited upon the children um, into the fourth generation. Mm -hmm. So when God is looking for a holy people, and in that holy people looking to birth a Messiah who would take away the sins of the world, he had to keep them separated. Amen, yeah. He had to keep <clears throat> them separated genetically. Mm. Uh, so that's why you, you had to marry another Israelite. You weren't allowed uh, to marry outside the tribes. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to live a righteous and holy life because genetically you wanted to maintain that righteousness yeah. to the thousandth generation. Uh, it's, it, I think it's one of the great miracles and it seems to go unnoticed, but there's not another culture on the planet that has survived for 4,000 years. Yeah. Not a single one. The only one that's close is the Han Chinese culture, and that's gone through several revisions uh, over the centuries, but that only goes back 2,500 years. And they had their land. They were never dispossessed. There were plenty of exoduses from China as various upheavals happened and great migrations leaving, but the Han Chinese stayed in the land. Uh, the Jews stayed as a culture because of these restrictions. Uh, the old adage, the, we didn't keep the Sabbath, the Sabbath kept us. So I admire that. Uh, I affirm that. Uh, I affirm that uh, the Jewish people are chosen by God. Uh, and then that chosen, there were very specific requirements that he wanted them to live by. Uh, and uh, they were tough. Uh, yeah. And you go to Israel today and I, I admire anyone who is living in accordance with the Torah uh, to say, yes, uh, you go and, and you keep going.
I also am reminded of uh, Peter, mm -hmm. who, you know, got the vision from the Lord. It was an open vision. We just talked about this yesterday on the lesson, which is coming out today at 4 p.m. Shout out. You guys should watch it, where we really talk about the Sabbath. And we kind of touched on this a little bit, um, you know, asking the question, you know, when was it where Christians didn't have to follow the rules of the Sabbath, which were pretty strict and hard to follow? You've said that you've tried to follow those I tried, those to, keep a, those I tried to keep a Sabbath and made it yeah. to noon. <laughs> and, I don't even think I could make it to noon. Uh, so, you know, yeah. It, it was, wow, I'm, I, 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 I really rejoiced I have a Messiah. Uh, yes, exactly. It's hard to keep these yeah. things. So I think it just, reiterates how grateful at least I am and I'm sure you and a lot of people watching that we do have a Messiah who has made the once and for all atonement for our sins so that we don't have to necessarily follow all of those strict rules. We can observe the Sabbath, Sabbath of course, which is in the Ten Commandments. We can observe the Jewish holidays, but it's not to the seriousness, I guess, is that the right thing to say, to the extent that it used to we be? We can stand fast in the liberty where Christ Amen. has made us free. Took the Whenever I them. get, you know, tempted, and, and it is, temp I want to separate myself. I, I want to try to prove, I guess, to myself that I can, I can do it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, again, uh, our freedom in Christ is not an excuse to sin, and, yes. and please keep the, keep the top 10. Yes. Um, but there's 613 commandments in the Torah. And, um, you know, Ashley mentioned the great vision that Peter had, you know, rise, kill, and eat. Uh, let no one call unclean what I have created. That's a great vision that releases us from the dietary requirements. The other is the Council of Jerusalem, which you find in the book of Acts, where they ask the question, what should Gentile believers do? Should they come under the law of Moses? And the decision where the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus, James, stood up and said, our ancestors couldn't keep these rules. Why would we put them on our, the new believers? Mm -hmm. uh, that question was primarily about circumcision, but it was also all-encompassing, whether it's the dietary laws or the laws of the festivals or the laws of the Sabbath. What they concluded is, please don't eat blood, and please don't eat anything uh, that's been strangled, uh, don't commit sexual immorality. Uh, and if you observe these things, then you will prosper in your walk as Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's something, you know your history, know why Christians have this liberty. Uh, please remind yourself to go read Galatians, you know, walk through that, that's a, it's a great, testimony, if you will, from, from St. Paul as to how to walk the Christian life. Um, but at the same time, admire what God has done in the Jewish people. It's like his signature is all throughout their history. Yeah. Uh, and it's wonderful that they've been brought back to Israel and are blooming once again. Amen. All right. That was a great question. Great answer. All right. Well, you, if you guys would like to ask us a question or give us a topic to talk about on the show, like we just did, make sure you visit our social media pages. Look for our post on the different platforms such as Facebook and Instagram at 700 Club Interactive. And you can also visit our YouTube page for extended interviews and stories and share clips like this with your friends and family. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had a very reflective week as I've looked back on memories of Queen Elizabeth and then the 9-11 tragedy. And some of our favorite stars are showing their respect in some very special ways. Well, even as we look back and respect, we also look forward to some exciting new developments on the horizon that we're excited to share with you. Here's Ephraim Graham with his, uh, this week's top five stories from Studio Five. At number five. Long live Queen Elizabeth. Hollywood joins the world mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Dame Helen Mirren played the monarch in the 2006 movie, The Queen. She posted on Instagram, quote, we mourn a woman who, with or without the crown, was the epitome of nobility. Elton John writes that the queen was an inspiring presence to be around, and she led the country through some of its greatest and darkest moments with grace, decency, and a genuine caring warmth. And Rolling Stones frontman Mick Jagger says he remembers watching her wedding and watching her grow from a beautiful young lady to the much-beloved grandmother of the nation. The Netflix series The Crown, currently filming season five, show creator Peter Morgan tells Deadline he expects they will stop filming out of respect, adding that the show is a love letter 
to the Queen. At number four. Ladies and gentlemen, Halle Bailey. A standing ovation and cheers for Halle Bailey at Disney's D23 Expo in Anaheim this weekend after fans got their first look at her as Ariel in the live action remake of The Little Mermaid. Wish I could be. This was the first time I've seen Part of Your World all put together today, as well as the trailer. And, you know, I'm just pinching myself. I feel really kind of like out of body in a way, like seeing myself play a character that I've loved for so long and um, just putting my own twist onto it. And I'm just so grateful to be here. At number three. And the Emmy goes to Cheryl Lee Ralph. And Ralph delivers the most unforgettable Emmy moment, accepting her award for Best Supporting Actress in a comedy series. I am an endangered species, but I sing no victim song. I am a woman, I am an artist. And I know where my voice belongs. She plays teacher Barbara Howard in the hit sitcom Abbott Elementary, earning her first Emmy nomination after more than 40 years in her career. She's also only the second black woman to win the award. To anyone who has ever, ever had a dream and thought your dream wasn't, wouldn't, couldn't come true, I am here to tell you that this is what believing looks like. This is what striving looks like. And don't you ever, ever give up on you. At number two. You know what it's like when war follows you home. Actor Chris Pratt posts a touching tribute on the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks. Today, we remember those who woke up, kissed their families goodbye, and went to work without realizing they wouldn't return. Today, we remember those who risked their lives for us and our country, forever in our hearts and in our memory. Number one. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Perhaps a Studio 5 scoop from actor, author, producer, and youth pastor Kel Mitchell. Well, I, I can't let you go without asking because I'm hearing buzz. Is there another Good Burger coming? Are we going to see something happening? <laughs> your partner in crime uh -oh, seems to be hinting something's coming. <laughs> Could Ed and Dexter be making a comeback after all these years? Look at you trying to get that exclusive. I'm actually seeing him later today. He's hosting the Emmy, yes. so uh, that's super cool. But, um, okay, uh, I'll say this, okay? Uh, Good Burger is always open, and we're open for deliveries right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Ephraim, <laughs> welcome back to the show. All right, we got to talk about Ed and Dexter. They might be making a big comeback in the near future. Tell us more about what Kel Mitchell is up to. All signs point to that. We were talking to him about a number of issues on Monday, right before the Emmys, and then he goes and makes an appearance on the Emmys where we saw his partner in crime hosting, and they reminisced and pointed yet again to Good Burger. Those of us who are fans remember them from the 90s are certainly rooting for it. He didn't close the door. His line to me was this, Good Burger is always open for business and ready for delivery. So I suspect something could be happening. <laughs> I really loved seeing Kel at the Emmys. I was watching like um, highlighted clips of the night on YouTube. I wasn't able to watch it live, but mm -hmm. I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, he was... literally raced from our interview to the Emmys. Whoa. <laughs> so when I saw him appear, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Awesome. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward Efren to it. gets the script. <laughs> I think that's so. Right. 
All right, well, we've got to talk about Queen Elizabeth, her legacy, uh, her legacy of faith, the uh, Christmas messages that she would handwrite. Yeah. Uh, she would do them. Uh, those were all always her words. How do you see the world handling her loss? Well, it is a, a deep loss for many of us, and many of us are probably surprised to even feel the loss that we do feel. Hollywood certainly feeling it. We're seeing... Um, notes of, of thanks and inspiration and, and tweets and posts uh, from all over Hollywood remembering her. Of course, the funeral is on Monday. Even as we speak, services are underway, uh, and that will continue up and through Monday. Hollywood certainly remember her. Uh, even the production of the Queen on hold until after all these things unfold, uh, and she will certainly be missed. Uh, I remember watching those Christmas speeches as well and always being touched, and I'm sure many more more were, were as well. Yeah, I actually heard that The Crown, which is the show that you mm -hmm. mentioned that was put on hold, um, there's a surge in viewership right now on Netflix because everyone's watching, especially the first uh, two seasons, which really depicts her her uh, wedding and then coming into the position of queen mm -hmm. as her father dies. I'm a huge fan of the show as well. And I have to say, um, the show really made me fall in love with the queen, that's for sure. And the creator so. says it, that it is exactly that, a love letter to the queen. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, she's worthy of the love yes, letter. She yes. She really held the title, Defender of the Faith. Yeah. Indeed she did. Yeah. All right, well, switching gears, Chris Pratt, uh, he posted a really touching tribute to the victims of 9-11. Tell us more about that. And is he coming out with a film soon? Uh, he's got a series coming out on Prime where he okay. does play uh, a Navy SEAL, if you will. Uh, so we'll see that. He ha naturally has an affinity for those in the military. He posted on the 21st anniversary of 9-11 that we're not going to forget those who left their homes and did not know they would not return. It was a touching tribute. He also posted a photograph from a, a another website of the watch of one of the gentlemen who actually helped to keep uh, bring down that plane in Pennsylvania. It's it's a, a tribute there as well. Uh, and we saw the world pay tribute, uh, of course, on the anniversary of 9-11. But Chris yeah. Pratt's uh, post was very, very touching just yeah. for us to remember. Those people left their homes not knowing they would not return. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's talk about Cheryl Lee Ralph. Goodness gracious. Yeah. I got chills just listening to her acceptance speech. Uh, what, tell us more about her story. Cheryl Lee Ralph has actually been in the business for more than 40 years. She acted alongside Sidney Poitier very early on. She began her career in the late 1970s. Her big break was probably Dream Girl. She was one of the first on Broadway to uh, act in that play alongside Jennifer Holliday. I remember actually meeting her following her performance on Broadway. That was my introduction to Broadway. And to see after 40 years in the business plus, this was her first Emmy nomination and her first win. And she says, you know, uh, she wanted people to know, don't give up on your dreams. For her to be doing all that she's been doing for some 40 years and to only get a nomination for an Emmy this very first time and to win. Uh, she is, as she said, uh, what believing looks like, what faith looks like, what endurance looks like, and what continuing to pursue. Hard to believe she is 65 years old. Old uh, as well. She you looks amazing. Wow. <laughs> she looks incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Overnight Love sensation, her. 40 That's years amazing. in the making. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, but boy, she used that platform really well. Goodness gracious. Yeah, she understood she the moment and just and just went for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she uh, is all the talk this week. That is, I mean, she was preaching. Yeah, she, she was. was. She was singing, yeah, she but was. she was. <laughs> She's got a voice. She's got an incredible voice. What was the song that she was singing? Uh, that song is from a jazz artist called uh, Diane Reeves, and it's called uh, uh, I'm, I'm an Endangered Species, and okay. she talks about being an endangered species. So it's a, a tribute there, but that song was many moons ago, but it's from Diane Reeves. Mm, it's powerful. Yes, it, it is. It was powerful. Indeed. Okay, well, before we let you go after mm -hmm. I just have to mention, I'm excited about the Little Mermaid live action. Tell us more about that. Well, you saw Halle Bailey, and that is the first time she saw the, the performance there. That's the trailer. It's our first peek, and it's actually the number one thing trending from Disney right now from their big D23 fan celebration. They previewed many things, but everybody's talking and waiting for Little Mermaid, and her performance is incredible. Her voice mm. is absolutely beautiful. Penetrating. So.
Yeah, it really is. I mm -hmm. wish I could sing like that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Me three. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't even talk. <laughs> well, uh, goodness gracious, she can hold the tone. She can. Oh, my goodness. All right, that's all the time we have. Here's a word from Psalms 56. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Let that word watch over you throughout the day. We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.